Many Halo players have indicated that they just want Halo Infinite to be a next-gen experience, but is that the right move for the franchise? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again and we're doing another commentary video talking about some Halo Infinite and what platform Halo Infinite should really be on. If you guys like these discussion kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to Halo Infinite, your tap subscribe to keep yourself updated with everything going on. So let's get right into it. Oftentimes I like to use my community page on this channel to kind of reach out and communicate with you guys other outside just like comments on these videos and just the videos themselves. And you guys replied to this one quite a lot. Put a poll out on the channel saying, do you want Halo Infinite as a Xbox Series X slash X and PC exclusive? And with over 5,000 votes, that's a lot. Thank you so much for your participation in this guys. 76% said yes, they want it as a next gen only only experience with well, 24% said no. I put the same question out on my Twitter page as well, link in the description down below if you guys want to follow me there. And with less votes, obviously around 350 votes, we still generally got about the same breakdown of 71% saying yes, 28% saying no. Obviously I recognize this is a very small player count of just like a total poll as itself. Like obviously it's not representative of the entire community. We are very much a dedicated group of people who would like to watch YouTube content understand the game, know what's going on with the franchise and things like that. So we're a very dedicated group of players. We don't represent the entirety of Halo, but I just don't have the resources as a content creator to get that kind of information out. But from our limited poll, we definitely can see that people want Halo Infinite to be a next gen only game. Some of the comments on this were rather revealing as well as one person said that 343 should not be wasting their time trying to optimize a game for eight year old hardware. I can understand the fear of the limitations that having to put a game on eight year old hardware that even when that hardware was released wasn't even that powerful back then like a little upgrade from the 360 back then that trying to push the envelope for next gen for this time around would be rather taxi on and probably even hold the game back i mean obviously we have all seen what happened with cyberpunk where the idea of the game though that they had was they wanted to make an absolutely beautiful amazing game for truly next gen experiences and they thought oh we'll just downscale it from there but as they downscaled they came across a lot of development issues with that and we currently have the situation with cyberpunk where honestly like it's a really good game like yeah it has some of its weird you know hiccups and bugs and stuff like that i've been playing on pc mainly with a decent setup and i've been enjoying myself a lot like yeah there's some bugs that kind of break the immersion sometimes but not as bad as it is on the last gen consoles i mean the game can, can it just can't run on the last gen and the gameplay revealed that we did see for halo infinite was actually done on a pc meant to emulate the xbox series x hardware so even what we saw wasn't really that great. And it was playing on PC. Rare Candy replied to this saying, single player, yes, have it be last gen only. Multiplayer, no. Assuming there's not some giant large scale mode that would be compromised by last gen hardware. Let everyone play the free to play multiplayer and help Microsoft recoup some of that money. It also helped catapult Infinite to a top of Twitch and the gaming community as a whole. Now this idea does kind of make sense because I would expect the multiplayer to be less taxing than the single player just because of the smaller scale maps and stuff like that. I do have a feeling that with the recent leak about Big Team Battle 2.0, that we, we, would, we would have some uh, large scale mode that would be affected by last gen hardware. But Rare Candy brings up a good point talking about that we need as many people as possible to jump into that multiplayer to play. And most of the people still have last gen hardware if they're playing on the Xbox platform. Wikipedia cites that the Xbox One, I'm assuming that they accounted for all the consoles from their Xbox One family of consoles, Sold 51 million total. And the last actual number I could get for the Xbox Series X and S consoles that were sold was just under 2 million. Of course, this number is as of December 21st of 2020, so obviously more have been sold since then. I've seen the number kind of reaching up to 3 million some other places. Microsoft's weird with their totals. But you can see that huge dispar disparity between the Xbox One family of consoles and the Series X series of consoles as well. I mean, Microsoft was even pushing back like, in 2019 the big get people to buy the xbox one x consoles and so imagine having to spend that money on those consoles and then having to buy a new console after that it's just it wouldn't be really fair to the consumer bill vadem said as long as there is enough stock of new consoles then i think it should be a series x 
slash S and PC exclusive. This is actually something that Phil Spencer brought up as well, that he feels like the success of Halo is kind of tied to the availability of the Xbox as well. The, the one, they're both connected. They're not just separate entities like they kind of have been ever since, well, uh, since the release of Halo 2. I mean, you look at the box itself, Halo Infinite's on the box when you buy an Xbox Series X. I think that's another reason why that pushback till fall of 2021, most likely November of 2021 for the release of Halo Infinite, just gain people the opportunity more to get a chance to buy these new consoles because they're selling out as soon as they're available. The supply is limited, the supply chains because of the current pandemic have been really affecting that. And this could possibly allow 343 to probably push the envelope a little bit more when it comes to the graphical fidelity, just because they know that more people will have the next gen consoles. So then when you get the old gen, you're like, well, we're a year away since the initial release of next gen. So, you know, it's understandable if things aren't running super well. DX Closing Bowl said, no, because I can't really afford a PC or new Xbox. This also is a very important point as well, that these new consoles, they're not cheap. I mean, maybe like the Series S is rather a more affordable point, but even then, like you have to take in consideration the situation in the world right now. Many people are unemployed due to the pandemic. Many people in the economy as a whole have been hitting some hard times. Not everyone is in the same situation where they can get the newest hardware to play the newest games. Like myself, I would love to get a new Xbox Series X, but I actually invested that money into upgrading my PC and I'm planning to get a new graphics card for my PC. So I plan to play on that platform alone. I wish I could get the new Xbox, that would be awesome, but I just don't have the money for that. Noah Payer does say here, it's saying that I want it to be as accessible as possible, not ending up like Cyberpunk. That's a very big thing as well. We we cannot afford to have Halo Infinite release like Cyberpunk. Now, I think the biggest issue with Cyberpunk is not necessarily even the bad performance, honestly. I think it's more the lack of transparency that CG Project Red had about last gen. They never really stated anything, at least from my knowledge, but I kind of roughly followed the news for Cyberpunk. I didn't follow it directly. But from my understanding is that they kind of advertise it like it was going to run on the last gen hardware. They didn't really talk about downgrades. I mean, obviously we would assume probably 30 FPS cap, lower resolutions, but to see the quality that the game released in and with those bugs. And on top of that, the hardware issues that they're having with the last gen, they kind of need to at least say like, hey, don't expect the best experience, and they didn't mention that at all. So should Halo Infinite be made for just next gen? I don't think it should be. It is rather common practice for at least like first two or three years of a new console to be released that you have the old gen and new gen versions. Especially just being one year out from the initial release of the next gen consoles, you kind of need to have that last gen option for people. Now the big thing is just they don't try to push it so hard with it being looking good on next gen. That's what Cyberpunk ran into and obviously, obviously we know the issues that are going on with that right now. And from what we saw from the gameplay trailer, the graphics weren't really that impressive to be honest. What's more impressive is the scale of Halo Infinite rather than the visuals of like all the quality of textures and items within the world. So if 343 is getting this extra time of one year for development, hopefully they can work some secret sauce to make it so the Xbox One is a playable platform while also having the next gen being truly a next gen experience. If you guys missed any news and informational videos from me recently, check out the videos on the screen or over here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos. It's been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.